Hi there, Kelly Swindler here. It is Friday, 29th of January. I thought a million times about doing this video and then thought I shouldn't do it. And then the worry of not doing it kind of got me thinking, well, then you're not living your values. You're not doing what you tell everybody else to do. So here I am. And today, this is what mental health looks like. Um, for those of you that don't know, I experienced a uh, really bad burnout in 2013. Um, the first time I had ever experienced any kind of mental health issues was after the birth of my sons back in 2000. I had really bad postnatal depression that was undiagnosed for a really, really long time. And when I got on top of that, I managed really, really well. 2013 came along, burnout hit really badly and the mental health consequences of that over the last almost eight years uh, are still very, very much with me. My mental health is something that I have to proactively manage. Every single day I am doing something to ensure that I keep my mental health on track and I, I ensure that I get enough sleep, I stay hydrated, I do lots of water, uh, I do lots of talking, I do lots of journaling, I do lots of yoga, I do my meditation, I uh, am conscious of what I eat, uh, I don't drink alcohol, I'm, I'm very proactive in ensuring that I can avoid the extreme highs and the extreme lows of mental health conditions and we are near the end of January and this last week as I think many many of us are feeling at the moment we are in a new year we are still in this pandemic in the UK we are still in lockdown Many of us are feeling the fatigue and the exhaustion and the boredom and the stress and the kind of never ending monotony of what just feels like another Groundhog Day. Here we are again, here we are again, here we are again with no real end in sight. I have noticed my own sons this week who, whilst they've obviously the same as the rest of us found the last year a challenge, they've been bored, they've been frustrated, they've you know, all of those things. This week, it has really, really started to take its toll on them. It is starting to take its toll on practically everybody that I have seen within my network. Everybody is feeling it. And so in part, even though I have been doing and being proactive and, and living in a way that works for me, this week I am still really, really feeling it. Really, really feeling it. Um... Uh, physically exhausted, mentally drained, at the same time really anxious and worried and then trying to maintain positivity and being hopeful and being hugely grateful for everything that I have. But I have this constant push-pull, push-pull. And it's like anxiety at the same time as being really positive and low at the same time as feeling really energised. And that in itself for me is really, really draining. Wanting to then be there for others. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at ensuring that I protect my own boundaries, but wanting to be there for others and helping people as much as possible. A lot of my coaching clients this week have been, again, really struggling with energy levels and concentration and relationships and conversations and all of those sorts of things. And thankfully I've booked next week off work. But I suppose the main reason that I wanted to share, I think we're all feeling it. And when we talk about mental health, when we, you know, it's good to talk about it. And I've always said that I think if those of us that are struggling with our mental health want to talk about it, it's important that people are prepared to listen to us. Talking about it and having people trying to fix us doesn't help. We, we do, if we are going to talk about it, we do need people to listen. And that doesn't mean that we need to be fixed. Sometimes we just need to be able to get things off our chest. I'm also finding and, and feeling this week that I'm just like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. 
I feel like I'm kind of, I'm done with it. And I think some of that is the pandemic stuff and some of it is the lockdown stuff. But today, the thought of wanting to talk to anybody about how I'm feeling, it's just like, I'm done. And that can be for some people a really scary, lonely, difficult place to be. Um, I know that when I am in this place, it's more important for me to take some time out. I need I need some downtime on, on my own. And again, I think with lockdown and everything else that, that has been happening, I've been constantly surrounded by people. So I know when I get to that point, I do need to withdraw. Not for, not for very long, but I know that I need to withdraw. Some people, when they get to that point, it can be because they are almost at breaking point. And again, I think we, you know, we, we need to really acknowledge that. Um, and I think we, we, we need to be aware that if people do not want to talk about it, we've got to create the space for them so that when they are ready, we are there for them. Um, today... I have got meetings that I really don't want to do. The anxiety levels in me are, are raising massively. Um, I, what's the postman? <laughs> um, the anxiety levels are raising in me massively for this meeting that I've got to do. But I also know, and the, again, this is kind of where this push-pull comes from. If I am genuinely protecting my val values uh, or protecting my boundaries and living from my values, potentially what I should be doing is saying, actually, no, I'm not going to have that meeting today. I'm going to postpone it because today I'm not in the right headspace and I'm not in the right energy mode. But I also know today, if I postpone or cancel that meeting, the guilt and panic and feeling of then actually, when am I going to get around to doing it again? And I will have let people down today with where I am will overwhelm me even more than the mental exhaustion and the energy levels that it's going to take for me to have the meeting. And sometimes that in itself is again this kind of real push-pull. So I don't really know what the message is today but I think we we are all feeling it. Those of us with existing mental health conditions are feeling it those of us that have maybe never had mental health conditions are feeling it it's it's tough uh talking about it can help when we are ready to talk about it um being heard when we are ready to talk about it helps um but i also think at the moment many of us are are kind of in a point of of like emotional fatigue um we cannot we're not receiving necessarily what we need from people at the minute because lots of us are in this place of exhaustion and fatigue and actually we have lots of us have nothing left to give so i think many of us are wanting other people to help lift us up or help get us out of it but many of us haven't got that much energy left in the tank to continue to be helping and supporting and giving other people what they need because actually we can't do it for ourselves fully at the moment and I guess that's what I kind of want to say. We are all feeling this. And, you know, I'm still hearing lots of people like, oh, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're not in the same boat. We may be on the same river, maybe on the same sea, but we are not in the same boat. I've been saying since last March, you know, some of us are, are, are sailing across this on, you know, like executive yachts. And some of us are going through this on rubber dinghies with holes in them that they're having to keep taping over the the cracks and the holes just to kind of keep themselves going we are all having a very very different experience with this thing that we are all experiencing it's impacting us all in totally different ways it is taking its toll on us in totally different ways and i think we we just we need to be open with that I'm going to have my meeting today, but I'm also going to express at the beginning that today is not a good day for me. That's the only way that I will be able to get through it. I can't fake being something that, that I'm not in the meeting and I I don't want to be distracted 
during the meeting by other people thinking that I'm perhaps not myself today. So I have to I have to be that open. I have to have that meeting. I want to have that meeting and I want to be that open. But I just. Lots of us are feeling lots and lots of different things at the moment. Some of us can't express it. Some of us can't talk about it. Some of us aren't being heard. Some of us don't know what we're feeling. Um, and I think that level of openness is what we need to do. But I think we've also got to recognise at the minute that if we are reaching out to people for help and support, they've probably not got the energy in the tank to give us anything else, to give us what we need, to give us what we're craving. And I think the more aware of that we can be, it's important that we are all filling ourselves up. I've been doing all of my usual stuff this week and whilst it's helped a little bit, it's not got me anywhere close to where I need to be energy wise. It's not got me anywhere close to where I need to be mentally or physically or just energetically. It's not got me there. So I'm taking next week out, gonna have a break. I've got some stuff to plant, I've got a bit of painting to do. I wanna sleep. I need sleep. Um, whether that will help or not, I don't I don't know. Like none of us have been in a pandemic before. We're all still learning, we're all still adapting, we're all still having to take it day by day. Um, but I think just creating that awareness, doing what we can for ourselves, protecting our boundaries, being open and honest about how we're feeling, and then just seeing how we go from there. This is what mental health looks like. I, I Even through this bit, I don't even feel that I've been able to express everything that I have got going on in my head at the moment. It's uh, it, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um, but this is what mental health looks like. Um, it doesn't mean that people are necessarily breaking down in tears or any of that sort of stuff. You know, mental health is, is very much a, a, a hidden thing and sometimes we want to talk about it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we want to be heard, sometimes we're not. Sometimes we can express how we're feeling and sometimes we can't. Um, we are all in this together, even though we are all having very, very different experiences. So let's create that awareness. Let's recognise that we may not be getting what we need from those around us at the moment because they haven't got anything else to give. Um, let's recognise it's difficult and... Let's just do keep going and doing the very, very best that we can. If, like me, you need some time off or you need some time away or you need more sleep or whatever it is that you need, do what you can to get it. Again, I know for some people that is really hard to do at the moment, but do what you can for you on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. We're all taking it day by day at the minute. We will, we will all get through this. Some of us may come out the other end more bruised and battered than others, but we will all get through this. We are getting through this. And we've just got to keep on doing our best. That's me. This is what mental health looks like. Friday, 29th of Jan, taking next week off. And I'm still doing a live with Laura on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, but that's it. This is mental health. Not always pretty not always clear is what it is. Take care. See you later.